Rohit Dhawan decides to shop a new script. Honestly, he cuts it down to just going down south, picking up a very popular hit and reappraises it with substantial commitment to the original. So, the super hit Ala Vaikuntha Puramlu comes in as Shehzada. Remember, there was an old Shehzada starring uh, Rajesh Khanna and Rocky, if I'm not mistaken, and it was a bomb at the box office. Reports as I speak to you about this Shehzada also is similar and disturbing. Don't forget that Kirti Aryan's uh, Bulbulaya was one of those that made it big when uh, Bollywood was going through a very rough patch. So it's a little disturbing from uh, Karthik Aryan's point of view that his uh, Shehzada is not doing as well as one would have wanted to or would have expected. In the South, most people have seen Ala Vaikuntha Puramlo and today uh, it's not just the people in South but Pan India, you have a dubbed version of Ala Vaikuntha Puramlo going on television. So uh, there's hardly somebody who's unversed about what the film and the story is about. Very simple story. Papa, uh, Mukul Sharma plays it in the original. Here you have Paresh Rabo, decides to swap children with the evil motive of ensuring that his son grows up in rich, uh, in richness, while the son born to a very rich couple, Rohit Roy and Manisha Koirala, grows up in his impoverished family. After swapping the children, he not only ensures that his son gets the silver spoon, but the deprived boy who grows with him also gets the raw end of the stick in everything, including his name being called Bantu. Notwithstanding the fact that he's ridiculed for it, he sticks to it and Bantu grows up in the poorer household as Shehzada Karthik Arya. You have a short uh, revelation later in the story as to how the uh, loose ends are tied up, how the families come to know who is the real son and who is not. Ending in, of course, all's good that ends well. In the meanwhile, the story goes through the typical South Indian story of uh, the bad boys and the good boys, the virtuous uh, businessmen versus the corrupt, the threats from them. And you know, Shehzada is the man who's going to stand up for his true parents and uh, save them from the calamities that are looming large. Very simple linear story, Befa Tin. Where does uh, Shehzada come then? In what context do we talk about Shehzada? Uh, obviously, we are not going to talk about it in terms of Rohit Dhawan's filmography. Not too much lies there. You are going to compare it with Trivikram's uh, Aravai Kunta Puramlo because that was a super duper hit. And you must understand that super hits have some magical quality about them by which uh, they are so universally accepted. And Alavai Kunta Puramlo was one such film, which was a real accepted across the board film. First, let's not compare uh, Karthik Aryan with Alu Arjun because Alu Arjun today is a veteran actor, an actor with great style of his own. Also, don't forget that South Indian cinema gives a few defined templates to each actor who, over a period in time, functions within that orbit with such convenience, such land actually. And Alu has done that. Unfortunately, it's not the same with Kartikarin for multiple reasons. One, he's not in a zone of uh, Alu Arjun. Two, I think too early in his career to have that aura about him built already. Third, I don't think Hindi cinema as yet has that very limited orbital space in which a hero functions from every film of his. Therefore, Karthi Guardian should not be compared with Alu Arjun. To some extent, that could also be the undoing of Shehzada because Allah Vaikuntha Puram was Alu Arjun everywhere. 
It was Allu Arjun music, it was Allu Arjun dance, it was Allu Arjun devilry, it was Allu Arjun's romance. There was so much of Allu Arjun uh, coming out of the script all and everywhere. This can't happen with uh, Kartik, but Kartik holds on to the film well. Does his job neatly. Paresh Ravan, as the father who's part villain, part comedian, does his job well. Manisha Koirala is a tall task. She's asked to rephrase a role that Tabu played and it's not easy and she ends looking theatrically or very studiedly rude in the film, which was not necessary. Rolly Troy is stiff, but he's alright because I think the role requires a certain kind of stiffness. Kriti Sanam is the surprise pack in the film for two reasons. One, Shezada itself is less, is more gender sensitive than its Telugu version was, whereas, you know, how Telugu cinema uh, objectifies women. There's not so much of objectification, at least at the level of dialogue and uh, talk. Yes, dressing, yes, but uh, Kriti carries it off very well. And I think she's growing as an actor, and that makes for an interesting observation. And Kriti and uh, Kartik form a nice pair. They have a good chemistry, two youngsters doing well and sincerely. And that somewhere works for Shezada. Is Shezada a good film? Definitely not. Is Shezada a watchable film? Yes, I would say so because it functions within its limited stated premise of being a commercial film where you leave your brains behind. Just go sit, listen to a couple of songs and dances, enjoy what's happening there and be done. I think the music is a letdown. There's nothing so magical in the songs or in the dances, which were again uh, USPs in the original. Having said all this, for those who have not seen Allah Vai Kunta Pulaklo, Shezada is not a bad watch. But for those who have and those who cannot uh, take that film off their head, this compare is going to constantly hit you and in compare, this film definitely loses out. Thank you very much for watching this and uh, let me sign off with the uh, acknowledgements to Abhinav and to Datu for making all this possible and reaching out to all of you. Hoping to hear for a feedback from some of you at least. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.